Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. If you are like me and you desire with every fiber of your being to press into the deeper waters of the secret place that you might know Him, that you might be wholly consumed in Him, found in Him, that place where we are real and we bring real worship, then join me in this new series in which we're going to look at how can we truly press into the deeper waters of the secret place and know Him. And I'm going to share insight from John G. Lake. I really pray this series truly blesses, provokes, challenges you, and enables you to truly press in and know the Lord with a deeper relationship than you've ever had in the past. Let's pray and let's press in. Father, we come in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. We want to know you. We want to be consumed by you. We just ask you, Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Come, Holy Spirit, right now and invade this place. Father, we want to be found real before you. We lay ourselves on the altar and we just ask for you to have your way. We love you, Father, with everything within us. And we just want, Father, to be found in you. Teach us how to press into the deeper waters that we may be consumed by your spirit, overwhelmed by your love, and that we might be true witnesses on the earth, bringing you all the glory, accurately reflecting and revealing you, Jesus. And I thank you, Father, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. If you go to Hosea chapter 6, Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. So let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is as certain as the dawn, and He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. Let us press on. Let us press deeper into the secret place that we might know Him, and He will meet with us like the rain. In Hebrews 10, verses 19 through 22, Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. We are coming and standing on a solid word foundation. And it is by the authority of the word that we draw near. Our hope is built upon that word, knowing that he watches over his word to perform it. And we're called here in these verses to draw near we're to come in a full assurance of faith. We're to have our hearts sprinkled clean. And we're to hold fast that confession of hope, knowing that we in Him are accepted in the Beloved, knowing that we've been given access, knowing that we will turn up and not be cast aside, knowing that we have the ability to come into His presence and truly know Him and be known by Him. We are so grateful. John G. Lake said this, The mind is the soul life, and it continues being of the earth, earthly and doing earthly things, until God does something to that mind, and we seek God for a new mind. What are we talking about here? We are talking about how we want to press in to these deeper waters and know Him. But one of the biggest problems that we have to overcome is the soul arena. The mind which is filled with the emotions and the memories, the opinions and the thoughts, which often become the very obstacles that rebuild a veil of flesh that hinder us. The gate stands wide open and the Lord says, come, 
but we're so fleshly, we're so earthly because we are held captive by our emotions, held captive by our thoughts and our opinions, that those very things hinder, stop, and block. We look at the children of Israel and we see how Jesus worked all these great and mighty miracles. I mean, think about it. When have you seen such great miracles? Demonstrations of power. He comes to his own and they can only see the son of Joseph. They can only see the kid. They cannot see the master because of their thoughts, because of their opinions, because of their memories. And we enter in because of our memories, we disqualify ourselves. We feel hurt. We feel injured. We've been told we're disqualified. All these things can so block you entering in. It's not the Lord. He's saying, come. But we have to take captive every thought, every emotion, every memory, and bring it into the obedience to the Lord. Because if we don't, many of us will spend our lives held captive to these emotions, to these things, seeking the validation from people and not from the Lord. Because He's made the way clear. And He's made the way available to us. But we have to understand that we have to trust by faith in what He did and not in ourselves. In 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, Paul explains, We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing captive every thought, all these emotions, all these hurts. Many of them, we have gone through and we've been injured in this life. We have been damaged. And the pain is so great, so deep. And we have to come and lay it at the altar of the Lord our God. Sometimes it's a day-by-day thing. Until we finally are free. But we must come and place it before Him because we have to have such a desire. God, I need to know You. I want to know You. I'm not satisfied with knowing You from afar. I think of the children of Israel and how the Lord went with them as they left Egypt. And there was that fire by night and the cloud by day. And if I was there, I'd want to be so close to the fire I don't want to be on the outskirts where there is vulnerability, where the protection begins to fade. I want to be right by the source. I want to be right where the Spirit of the living God is. Lake explained, The church at large recognizes the salvation of the Spirit, but they have not recognized the salvation of the mind from the power of sin. And that is why many church people say there is no such thing as sanctification. They don't understand. Listen, when you received Jesus, you became spiritually alive. You became born again. Your spirit man became a complete new creation and you were set free spiritually. The sin of your past washed, cleansed. But we have a soul. Because we are a spirit being, but we have this soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, and we live in in a flesh vessel here on this earth. This soul arena is the component that must be renewed every day by bringing it and presenting it to the Lord God. Our soul is meant to walk in obedience to our spirit, but we've been so trained on this earth to walk as soul people, to walk dictated to by our emotions, by our feelings, by all those thoughts that we struggle stepping into the area where we are led by the Spirit and we walk as spirit beings. God is a spirit. And if we are to come and truly worship Him and meet with Him in the secret place, it is in spirit. He speaks to us spirit to spirit. And it is there that He wants to so connect with us, the real us, and have intimacy of fellowship. But we have to understand 
that the soul arena has to become subject to the spirit. And we can no longer be controlled and dictated. So we want happiness. And happiness is an emotion that fades. It has its highs and its lows. And is dictated to by what we feel, what we think. And so we think that if we're going to come in and have an encounter and experience with the Lord, we're going to have such great happiness. No, the Lord wants to give you joy. Something that is not dependent upon circumstances and can give you strength and be with you even in the darkest, the most difficult hours of your life. When all happiness fades, the joy remains. And that's a joy that's forged in the fire of the deep waters of the secret place of His presence. But it demands, and this is price that we must pay, of daily coming and laying our lives on the altar. In Romans 12, verse 2, and it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That is a requirement. That's not something God does for you. That's not something the Holy Spirit does. He will help you. But there is a requirement that we make that commitment, make that dedication. You know, if you on this earth want to get your body into better shape, there is a commitment that you have to make to working out and to doing the right things. It's not something that you do for one you know, one off, or maybe for a week. Many people make these resolutions and they'll do it for a day, a week, maybe a month. But until you get to that place where it becomes a consistent behavior, it's of no effect. The results don't last. And it's the same thing with this coming daily and presenting ourselves and saying, God, I am present. I've come before you and I'm present. I'm attentive. See, being present means attentive. Being available, it means being there. I believe the Lord God, every time, every day, comes to meet with us with an expectation that we will meet with Him. And when we cry out and say, God, I'm so desiring you, I hunger and I thirst for you, He says, I so desire to meet with you. And he comes with this expectation of meeting. And he expects that we will come and present ourselves to him and say, I am available. And as you read the verse, it's very clear that we have to lay our lives on the altar and refuse to allow the world to conform us. But we're to be transformed. In this new life, we no longer walk by this order held captive by that which is natural, but rather we begin to move by that which is spiritual, the Word, that we would have eyes to see, ears to hear. Every day of this, I come and I just present myself and say, Lord, here I am. Give me eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Teach me how to walk in this new life, in this new way, walking by the Spirit, not by my flesh. John G. Lake went on to say, Christ, I surrender my mind, thoughts, opinions, will, and emotions totally to you. My soul is your territory, not mine. Amen. I'm going to read that again. John G. Lake said this, Christ, I surrender my mind, thoughts, opinions, and emotions totally to you. My soul is your territory not mine. Amen. What a thought, what a place of consecration, because we feel that our emotions are ours, and we have a right. We have a right to our opinions, a right. What about me? What about my voice? What about my thoughts? Especially in this generation, where it is all about me too. It's all about me. In this generation that wants to constantly persuade you that you are the victim, but I'm telling you, if you want to get into the deeper waters of the secret place, the Holy Spirit will turn up and say there's only one victim, and it's Jesus. 
There's only one victim, it's Jesus. And if you get a hold of what the Spirit of God's saying, He is desiring to take you to the place where you're the victor. And the only way that you can walk as, the, as a victor is recognizing that He became the victim in your place. And all justice was accomplished on the cross when you were made clean. When you were given access to the greatest thing on the earth, the intimate fellowship and presence of the living God. And that should be everything to you. Sadly, because of the world. And if we allow ourselves to be conformed and we walk according to the things of the world, then we lose sight of the true worship of God. And rather, we're walking as earthly people, trying to be good earthly people, walking according to nice orders and rules, very moral. But that's all we are. We're just good earthly people. God's not looking for good earthly people. He's looking for children. Those who have fellowship and those who know Him. Those in whom He's able to come by His mighty Spirit and be enthroned on the throne of your affection and your imagination. Those in whom He can so take over, consume, and set you free from everything of this world. Listen, the things of the world are not your friends. Your emotions are not your friends. Oh, how many people, their lives are held forever captive because of emotions, because of, because of injuries and pains, hurts, all these things. And all they do is corrupt and all they do is steal life from them. You're never able to truly enjoy life. But the Lord said, He came that you might have life and that abundantly, which is the goal and the purpose of the secret place, is that you might come in and have that life in Him, the abundant life, as you know Him and you're known by Him. Place of fellowship. That you're always conscious of Him, conscious of His indwelling, conscious of His love, and ever filled, knowing that He's faithful, watching over and able to keep you. John G. Lake went on to say, If you and I had as much faith to believe that the enemy is master as we have to believe the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior, we would have this mighty, so we'd have a mighty little trouble with the devil or his power while we walk through this old world. Jesus said, Behold, I've given unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Read Psalm 91, the promises, the very benefits of a secret place dweller. There is nothing of the enemy that's able to touch, hurt, or harm you. And we are now, as a believer, given authority over all the power of the enemy because of him, because we are holy in him. You cannot separate us from Jesus. I believe the church has lost all understanding of who they are in Christ, of what it means to be the church, to be the body of Christ. He's the head. There is no separation. He is the head. You cannot have a body without the head, and you can't have the head without the body. And together we work, and we surrender to the head, which dictates and controls and leads and guides. But he uses the body. And what a holy intimacy, what a thought of working together. But everything must work with. There must be no power struggle. There must be no hindering, no pushing back, but rather an ongoing surrendering and yielding to any part of the body that resists the rest of the body, creates problems and becomes diseased and becomes weak. If the body is to function properly, each part must flow and work correctly and operate as one and God calls us to wholly surrender in the secret place and say I love you more than you will ever know you can trust me and in the secret place it becomes the safe place of his presence where you can open up and fully surrender and be fully set free and fully secure fully restored fully renewed and experience life in that abundantly. A place where you walk with full authority and not be held captive to the authority of your emotions, your thoughts, your will, and such like. John J. Lake went on to say, I tell you, beloved, it is not necessary for people to be dominated by evil, 
nor by evil spirits. Instead of being dominated, Christians should exercise dominion and control. Even Satan has no power over them, only as they permit him to have. And see, the problem is that the enemy operates on the natural realm through the soul, and he comes along and he seeks to take you captive by your emotions, your thoughts, your memories, and through those, that's an area where he is stronger, more he is crafty, and he is more than able to defeat you. That's not the area of your fight. But if we step into the spiritual realm in the secret place by bringing all these thoughts every day captive and subjecting them to the Lord and saying, here I am, I am available, give me ears to hear, give me eyes to see, give me a hearing heart, then there's a transformation that occurs in us in which we be found in Him. In this new life, we walk by the Spirit, and in the Spirit we have spiritual weapons that are mighty. And it's in the spiritual realm that Jesus made an open triumph over the enemy. Now, he's coming back one day. And when he comes back, he will in the natural enforce that victory. In the natural, declare that victory. Oh, it is his. But right now, he has completely done it in the spiritual realm. And he calls us to lay hold and walk by the spirit and not by the natural order. Everything of the natural is subject to change. But that which is spiritual is eternal. And if you can get you so that you stop walking naturally, but rather walk spiritually, you would not have up and down days subject to temporal changes in this temporal world. But rather you would walk by the Spirit which is always consistent, always increasing, always better every day. And that's what the Spirit of God wants for you. A place where you walk truly in liberty. Lake went on to say, Jesus said, Take heed, therefore, how you hear, which is based on Luke 18, 18. Sorry, Luke 8, 18. Not what you hear. One cannot help what he hears, but he can take heed how he hears. It's the attention that we give. It's whether or not that word and that voice we receive as an authority and we allow to penetrate our lives, the opinions of people. Listen, your validation doesn't come from people. It comes from the Lord. And you're going to have to learn how to get into the secret place and hear what He has to say and be moved by that. Many people, their emotions and their thoughts and their lives are devastated when they get the bad report from somebody who somehow says something that someone makes you feel disqualified, not good enough, that demoralizes you and breaks you because you've taken the wrong voice and allowed it the voice of authority in your life. But if I daily present myself in the secret place and say, God, I give you the honor. I declare you are Lord. I declare my eyes are focused on you. My ears are attentive to you. What you say matters. And we develop this discipline day after day of seeking Him. Then we hear His voice and what He says carries the greatest weight so that I become unmoved naturally, uh, secure spiritually. Lake went on to add, when there's something offensive to the Spirit and to the knowledge of God, shut the doors against it and it will not touch you. We receive all this stuff. And listen, the more time you spend in the secret place and the more you want to press into the deeper waters, the more you need to learn how to walk in agreement with the Spirit of God. That means I need to understand what He likes, what He doesn't like. I need to sense and determine that which grieves Him and that which offends Him so that I'm careful in my walk. And when I come into a place and there are voices trying to speak into my life that are offensive to the Holy Spirit, I say no to them. There's many of us that have allowed so much into our lives. And we wonder why that we reap all these problems. Because we've allowed the wrong voice in. Daily present yourself recognizing who He is, who you are, Holy Spirit. Giving Him the place of honor, the place of respect, and the place of authority. Teaching and training and saying, Holy Spirit, show me how. Teach me. 
lead me in the ways of life. Teach me how to continuously go deeper in the waters and not be stuck on this beach, moved naturally, moved by my feelings. I don't want this anymore. I want you. It is time that we allow the Spirit of God to circumcise off the old, to take it all off, cast it off, and put on the new man in Christ. Walking by the Spirit, by the things of the Spirit. In this place, as I present myself, here I come, and it's the Word. It's the living, Holy Spirit-breathed Word. And He opens it, because we need to walk not by opinions, but by revelation knowledge, that which the Holy Spirit opens to us, takes from the very heart of the Father, that which the Father has for you. And in the secret place, you see the Spirit of God breathe it, speak it from the very mouth of the Father, and it speaks to your spirit, not to the mind, but to your spirit. And in your spirit, you receive revelation, and that revelation becomes such a seed changing you enlarging on the inside of you until it bears fruit in you and through you and you are never the same. John J. Lake went on to say, the Christian lives as God wills in the world, dominating sin, evil, and sickness. I would to God that he would be lifted up until all believers would realize their privileges in Jesus Christ. We are meant to be walking demonstrations, witnesses to the world, so that the world sees in you and me, in our words, in our actions, in our responses, Jesus. They see when they attack, when they persecute, because that's when the all eyes are on you. And this is where we typically lose it. But if I learn how to present myself and say, Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Holy Spirit, you never leave me. And in this place, and in this moment, I give myself to you. I refuse to allow my mind, my emotions to dictate and control me, but Holy Spirit, show me. Mighty Holy Spirit, lead me. So that in the midst of this battle, uh, in the midst of this attack and onslaught, what the world sees is Jesus. A response that they cannot understand. A response that's not logical. A response that's not soulish and natural, but spiritual. I think about Judas. And I see <coughs> on that last night where he was about to betray Jesus and Jesus knew it. Jesus knew fully everything he was about to experience, all the pain, all the torture. I remember once having to go in for a procedure and I knew it would hurt and I dreamt all night I dreamt about it terrified and I went in there terrified and it was everything I expected it to be it was terrible it was painful I said Lord I'm never going back and I just had an opinion and I think about Jesus knowing full well everything he would endure and go through and chose to do it because of you and me he didn't have to but it was because of you and I that he did it for us. And here he sits, Judas, the one who would betray him and cause him to go through this. He takes Judas, and instead of, like we would, responding emotionally, responding in anger, how can you do this? Why would you do this? Demanding justice, why? why? How have I failed you? Jesus loves on him humbles himself and washes his feet that he might be broken by the love of the master but instead of being broken he hardened his heart even more that he would go on and do what he did and jesus will always turn up in love he will always turn up to serve he will always turn up in humility that we might know the intensity the depth height length and breadth of that love and until it's broken you, changed you, you're of no use. And then when we come to that place where the Spirit of God gives us eyes and vision to fully what Jesus did, and we get it in here, and we get it over our emotions, and we get it over our thoughts, and as a consequence, we allow the Spirit of God to transform us and to make us, then we come to a place 
where we are truly salt and light. As I explained here, John G. Lake said, At his last supper, with the disciples knowing that all power had been given unto him, Jesus took a towel and a basin and proceeded to wash their feet, demonstrating the depth of... And each one of them, he knew what they were about to do. He knew Peter would deny him. He knew all that. In his darkest hour, they would fail him. In the hour when he needed them most, they would be gone. But his love for them never failed. And his love for you will never fail. And even knowing all that you've done and all that you will do, he still reaches out and wants to love on you. And if you will allow him to transform you, to lift you and say, I am able to keep you. I'm able to do what you cannot do. John G. Lake said, when he had finished, he said, know you not what I've done. This is based on John 13. In explanation, he said, if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. The gross, icky, filthy feet. The things, they didn't have socks, but they walked. And I'm sure they were rough and dirty and all that. You know, who feet are icky. But he got down because that's the place where you make contact with the world. And where we make contact with the world needs washed. And it's our mind, it's our will, it's our emotion. It's the soul arena because that's where we make contact with the world, with the senses. And our senses need washed by the Word, washed by the Master, so that the Spirit of God transforms us. And we walk in a place not dictated to by the soul, but dictated by the Spirit. Worshiping the Father in spirit and truth and always going into deeper waters, ever knowing Him more, ever having a greater revelation of His love for you. That grows. It's personal. Lake said, when we examine the human heart and endeavor to discover what it is that retards our progress, I believe we will find that pride in the human soul is perhaps the greatest difficulty we have to overcome. Jesus taught us a wonderful humility, taking the place of a servant. That place where it's not about me. It's not about my justice. It's not about me and my voice and my opinions and what I have to think and what I have to say. Oh, we are so easy led. You've got to hear what I have to say. You've got to recognize me. But Jesus, the Master, the Lord of all, came and didn't demand to be recognized, didn't demand to be served, didn't demand to be protected, but laid himself down, ever serving, ever loving, ever looking to the Father and trusting that his defense and his justification, his justice came from the Lord. Understand he may not see it in his natural days on the earth, but it would come. And he looked for the joy set before him. He endured that which is set before him. The victory won. And we have to look and endure for that joy that the Spirit of God will so put before you that you will begin to see a hope and a vision and a place that what he has. And as you look in all these things and say, God, I so joyfully and wonderfully place myself and everything at the altar. I bring every thought captive. If you were held captive by so many hurts, so many injuries, all these opinions and thoughts, please bring them and place them on the altar. You may have to pour out and worship and pour out your soul day after day, but place them on the altar. And in this place, say, Holy Spirit, I take a hold of the word. I come and in the name of Jesus, teach me so that I am transformed by the word. Open it. Give me eyes to see. Give me ears to hear. Give me to right now a now word breathed from the very heart of the Father for me. And let it penetrate. Let it impact. Let it do what only the Word can do because it's got life to it. No other book has life. Every book may have inspiration. Every other book may have sympathy and some kind of creativity. But the Word of God has life to it. And when it's allowed to penetrate, 
It begins like a seed on the inside and brings such a change and a liberty. And until you've tasted and experienced it, you do not have any clue what we're talking about. And then the call to come in and not just worship God, but to come into His presence and know Him, to have such fellowship and relationship with Him, that place of holy intimacy. Lake said His presence with us, his, He is in us, must produce in our hearts the same conditions that were in Him. It must bring our life the same humility that was in Him. It is one of the secrets of entrances into the grace of God. That humility, where we're not moved by ourselves, our opinions, but all laid down on the altar, all humble before Him, where He is everything, and an absolute trust in Him, an absolute knowing that He is able to keep you, absolute knowing that He is able to watch over you, absolute knowing that He is able to guard your heart, an absolute understanding He fully appreciates everything you've gone through, all the injury, all the damage, all the pain, and He is able to heal. He is able to restore. He is able to redeem and turn it around. Only He can do that. And as long as the things are Lord, He can't. But when we come into the secret place and present ourselves and say, You are Lord, here I am. I humble myself before You and I allow Your life in me to bring every part of my being, and my soul included, into subjection to your word, so that Jesus, you are glorified, so that my life would so demonstrate you. Romans 8, verse 37. But in all these things, we are overwhelmingly conquering through him who loves us. There's not one time, no place, that he will not bring you into a far surpassing victory, to do something beyond Oh, we look for such justice, and it's so limited because our thoughts and opinions are so limited because we think temporal. But in the secret place of His presence, what God wants to do is so much bigger. There's more at stake than you can imagine if you will trust Him. And He will do something bigger and beyond, but it's going to take a trust and a walking by faith. Not by what you feel. Not by the emotions, not by the soul arena, but by the Spirit presenting yourselves daily to Him in faith, trusting that His Word will not fail, that He watches over His Word. I may not feel anything, but I trust His Word. And I allow His Word to do what only His Word can do. And as I said, you give the Word time and you'll see what it does in your life. You give the Word time in the secret place of His presence and you'll discover what the Word can do. You'll see how the Word can change your life and make of you something so radically different. John G. Lake said, One of the truest things in all my life, in my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, has been to feel that He was capable of knowing my sorrows and yours. And the truest sense, He therefore became our comrades because He becomes not one who sympathizes with, but one who brings real comfort. And that's what you need. See, we walk through life thinking we need people that sympathize, stand with us and bring the right word that make us feel better. But they don't change anything. And when they they leave, we're the same. But he comes to so comfort and show you, listen, I understand I've been there and I want to take you out. I want to take you out that I might bring you into something better. Bring you into the deep waters where you walk in life in that abundance, where you can stop and smell the roses and enjoy life, even on this earth. Lake said there's a union between Christ and the Christian that is so deep, so pure, so sweet, so real. And that's what the Lord God wants. This relationship that to you is everything, where it is so precious, so wonderful, so glorious, that you are forever changed. Not walking in a religion. Most people have a knowing about and have a taste of a relationship, but he wants a real, deep relationship where you know him and you're never changed where you are so 
caught up in Him, that every fiber of your being, God, I want to be swallowed up in you, because He keeps pulling back the veil, and I get greater glimpses of Him, and every glimpse I get consumed, amazed, overwhelmed. There's so much to Him. There's so much of His glory that blows me, my, blows my mind. I cannot comprehend. And He calls me to be His friend. He calls and He abides in me. He abides with me, ever touching and change and transforming my life. That you might know that too. Oh, that's my heart cry. That is the burden of my heart. He went on to say, It is because of the continuous inflow of the Spirit of Christ into our hearts that we appreciate or realize His power and triumph. His Spirit lifts us above surroundings and causes us to triumph anywhere and everywhere. There's not one thing you go through that should hold you captive. I don't care what the enemy throws at you. You serve a greater God. I've been there. I've been through so many things. And He has never failed me. Never failed me. And I give Him worship. I declare to you, Lord, and I am so grateful for you, Jesus. And I honor you, Jesus. I thank you. And I so pray that each person right now is seeing such a touch. Holy Spirit, there's no distance in the Spirit. Would you just so open their eyes to see right now. Open their ears to hear right now. And give them such a touch. Let them get a glimpse of the glory. Let them get a glimpse of the greatness and of the mercy of the living God. Let them understand who Jesus is and what He did on the cross and the depth, the height, the length, and the width of that love. Let it overwhelm. Let it break. Let it touch. Let it heal. Let it restore. Let it move in them even right now, Father. Even right now in the name of Jesus. And every spirit of oppression and depression, let it go. Every deception and hindrance and block, go in the name of Jesus and let your wonderful liberty. Let them know you, Jesus. Let them know that you're real. Let them experience your presence like never before. Even here, right now, Father, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Let me finish with this. John G. Lake said, The Christian life is designed by God to be a life of splendid holy triumph. That triumph is produced in us through the continuous inflow and abiding presence of the spirit of the triumphant Christ in the secret place. In the name above all names, may you be so plugged in that the one who rose from the dead, who overcame the one who was victorious, may that life, as the spirit invades you, fills you, fill you with that life, that life that so consumes that life that brings you that you are alive in Him, holy His, holy free. May it enlarge in you a vision and give you that you have a purpose and place even in this hour, called and appointed of God, that you might know who He is and that He called you, that He made you, and He so desires to have a living fellowship with you, and that His Word will be so opened. That as you open and take and come into the secret place, because you so want to know Him, because you so desire Him, that He would meet with you, and as you open the Word, it's living. It's not a book, but it's living. And there's fellowship, there's a life poured out and poured in. Blessing you, strengthening you, encouraging you this day. This is the day the Lord has made. This day. This is the day of salvation. This day. Oh, receive it this day. May it touch you. May it penetrate you more than it's ever penetrated and impact your life. Oh, that you would have ears to hear, eyes to see that the Word, the Word would so minister to you. It would linger. There would be an afterglow that it would come to your mind, reminding you ever showing you the greatness and the glory of the Lord. I pray this message has blessed you, and I encourage you to check out more in the series. If that word has, would you please, in the name of Jesus, like, share, subscribe, and give your comments. Because as you do, you truly help us with the uh, censorship and everything else going on, and with those algorithms at YouTube and Google. And I thank you for it, in the name of Jesus. And I remind you as always, that this, no matter what day it looks like outwardly, this is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it because through 
and for him. In the name above all names, the name of Jesus we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you.